In today's tutorial, we're going to accessorize the bathroom with shower flowers. Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to work on shower flowers. These are accessories to go over top of a shower curtain just like on a ring. So what we're going to do today is that we're going to follow this tutorial and there's some instructions with it. There's only five rounds in order to do it and I'm going to have some tips and I'm going to show you exactly how to be able to do these flowers. Let's go over the diagram next. On page number two of the pattern we have the diagram symbols and what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be working uh, on this particular flower and this flower is layered. So for example that there is layers going in behind other layers and because of that you're gonna see grayed out arrows where it's showing you what's gonna happen. So you'll see that this is the I think that's the back loop only or the front loop it's one of the two. Uh, we'll get to it in the pattern and you're going to notice that it's showing you in a gray arrow where to go to the other one here. So what we're going to do here is that you need to watch for that and then you'll see these gray arrows here. This is just allowing you to have multiple layers. So you can see layer number three is kind of gonna overlap layer number five a little bit. So you'll see that within today's pattern. So what you're gonna need in order to play today is some either Bernat Handicrafter or Lily Sugar and Cream Cotton Yarn. You're gonna want cotton yarn for this element of your bathroom. A size G four millimeter crochet hook today and let's get started on round number one. So let's get started. We're gonna create a slip knot first and use your size G four millimeter crochet hook today and insert it into the slip knot. Remember there's other tutorials available here on our learning channel for slower elements to doing uh, basic stitches just like this. So we're going to chain four to begin. Remember the, the one on the hook never counts as one. So it's one, two, three and four and let's insert our hook into the beginning chain like so, yarn over and pull through that one and the original. So you're going to now have the center ring exposed like this and this is your straggler which is your loose tail and I want you to when you're working with that just to wrap it around so it catches it underneath. Let's move along to round number one. In round number one we're gonna continue to use the same color and we're going to chain three and this counts as a double crochet within today's pattern. Okay and most times it does unless it tells you it doesn't. So this is considered one double crochet. So we need to put 11 more double crochets in around the ring. So just going right into the ring itself and I want you to double crochet. So that was one and I'll count these and we'll go in two and make sure you get that straggler so it's around the edge. Okay so it's in so it catches it underneath. Okay this is number three and four, five, six, seven, eight and you're noticing I'm gonna run out of ring space but because you're going in the ring you can just pull the ring and everything will shift. So that's that was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. So I got nine, 10, oops, ten, that was gonna be 10 <laughs> and I have 11 coming up right now. So with the chaining of three there should be a total of 12 of these. Let's count. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12 and I want you to slip stitch it to the top of the first chain three and pull together just like so. Let's move along to round number two. Let's move up to round number two. Round number two watch what we're gonna do. We're gonna pull up a loop and we're gonna keep it a little bit extra longer than we want than we normally would and what I want you to do is in the next double crochet down here I want you to do a, a double crochet front post. Okay so you're gonna wrap the hook and you're gonna go in around the post. Okay so just pop it in the one side of the post and out the other. So not on the top of the stitch. Yarn over pull through and then pull through two and two and you're done. Okay, so this first uh, that the extended chain that I just did it does not count as anything. It just is there. So now what I want you to do is chain two, one and two and into the next double crochet that's available to you in the front loop only. So if you're new to crochet there's always two stitches or two strings with front or, or that are counted as a stitch. So when you do the front one only that's a front loop and when you do the back one only it's a back loop. So in the front loop only you're going to single crochet. 
And the reason for this is that if you look at the diagram we're gonna be playing with the back loop later. So you you need that back loop in order to be there. So if you do you do if you go in both stitches at the same time you won't have access to be able to do that in the future. So you're gonna chain two. You're going to then do a front post double crochet into the next one. Okay. So you got one around here. So this one here is where the single crochet is. So just look for the next one that's available to you. So every other one is a front post double crochet if, if that makes it easier for you to follow. Then chain two, one and two and then come into the next one and front loop only. So next stitch front loop only for a single crochet and then chain two, one and two and then the next one is a front post double crochet. So just skipping and making sure you're going to the next one and you're gonna do this all the way around. So I'm almost halfway there. So chain two, front uh, single uh, crochet in the front loop only and then chain two and then the next one is front post double crochet and then chain two. Next one is front uh, single crochet front uh, loop only and then chain two and then front post double crochet into the next one. Chain two. Okay, front post single crochet. Chain two. Front post double crochet. Excuse me, I dropped my stitch. And then chain two. Coming up to the very end now is the next one is a front loop or front uh, single crochet front uh, loop. Yes for sure. And then chain two and then just join it to the top of the first front post double crochet like this. Just pull through. Okay, so you have what appears to be some texture and you got some extra loop stuff that we're gonna be playing with in the next round. So what I want you to do now is that I want you to take this color and I want you to trim it and get rid of it completely. So we're just gonna just trim it and I'm gonna pull through the stitch work and I'm just going to just weave it in and out of a few of the chain stitches here and I'm gonna let it fall to the back side and I'll deal with that later. Okay. So that's what I want you to do. So just keep an eye where you were and because you're gonna probably have to pay attention to that in the next round. Let's move on. Uh, grab another color and let's do number three together. So let's begin row number three. So before we begin what's gonna happen in this round is that we're gonna be playing within this layer here not this layer on the outside like we typically would. So we're gonna like fold things back uh, forward in order to get it. So what we need to pay attention to is that for example we're gonna start off in the single crochet area here. You've been in the front loop. This time we're gonna go into that same stitch but into the back loop and then in the front post uh, double crochet one that we went into we're gonna just play within the back section of that. So just gotta make uh, sure that you're doing this. This layering that you're seeing right now is gonna over layer the other one uh, that we're about to do. So let's begin. So let's create a slip knot to begin and we need to choose any one. It doesn't matter which one you choose. We need to choose any one of the single crochets where you were. Okay so there's one there's the front post double crochet so you don't want that one. Here's another one here. So I'm gonna choose this one just for because I can and I'm gonna just lean it forward and I'm gonna get the back loop of this one. So last time we were in the front loop. This time we're gonna go into the back loop and we're going to join with the slip stitch. I'll try to keep my project uh, invisible uh, in view for the whole time. So we're gonna join it with the slip stitch, chain one and single crochet into that same stitch. So now what we're going to do is that we're gonna work our way to the next one which is the front post double crochet section but we're gonna work again on the same revolution by just pulling it forward. So we're going to chain one first and in the back loop only of that same stitch. Okay so just there it is there just pull it back and in the back loop only you're gonna see two stitches here. Okay we only want the back loop only. Okay and what we want to do is the first one will be a half double crochet. The next one will be a double crochet into the same stitch followed by a chain one and then we're gonna get smaller again. So in the same stitch we're gonna do a half or double crochet 
and then a half double crochet. So each one of these are kind of like a shell. So there's gonna be half double crochet, double, and then double, and then half. Once you have that done, you're going to chain one and you're gonna move along to the next stitch available to you, which is the single crochet. Again, just keeping it forward and going into the back loop only and doing another single crochet there and then chain one and then move it back just so you can physically see it. Okay, so the next one again is the front post double crochet. So what we're going to do is that we're just gonna go into the back loop only of that one. Sorry, and we're gonna half double crochet the first one. Then we're gonna double. Then we're gonna chain one and then double and then half double. And then chain one. Okay, so the next one is a single crochet here. Just again, just kind of look at it. Okay, there it is. And then I'm gonna come in and do the back loop only for a single crochet. Chain one and then I'm gonna move to the next front post double crochet here. Just lean it back, get the back loop only. So it's gonna be half, it's gonna be double, chain one and then double, half. Okay, and continue along. So chain one, look for the next single crochet. Just get it and single crochet into the back loop only. Chain one and continue to do exactly what you've already done. So you're gonna see that there's gonna be a layering effect going on here. So continue that same pattern going all the way around. So I'm coming up all the way around. I'm doing the last section there where we're doing the half double crochet and then double. Chain one and then double and half. I'm going to chain one next and then I started in the single crochet so what I want you to just do is just join it just like the with the slip stitch and that concludes off round number three. We're gonna keep the same color going on and let's move on to the next round which is number four. So in round number four we're gonna create what appears to be these long chains but they're really not that long. It's just they've done it this way so that they can fit all of the, the view in here. So we're gonna start off where, where we left off and we're gonna chain two and this doesn't mean anything. We're just gonna drag it over so just extend and what we're going to do is that when you see the arrow we're gonna come in behind these clusters, chain three and then come behind the next one. Okay, and then chain three and come behind the next one. So we're just gonna go in the base of this. So number four is just really easy. It's just chaining three and just securing it with a slip stitch into the base. And let's begin to do that next, number four. So let's begin number four. We're gonna chain two, so one and two. And we're gonna slip stitch uh, starting into the base of the first one here of the, sh of the cluster. So you can see half double, double space or chain one and then double and then half. So what I want you to do is turning it around, getting it from the back side, going through the middle and then back out the bottom and I just want you to pull through. Okay, and pull through and through. So just pull everything through just like this. Okay, then you're gonna chain three. So one, two and three and then moving to the next one. Here's the cluster. Just get it from the back side. Go in between the two. So if you just need to separate it you can. So there's half, double, chain one, double and half and just going in between the two middle ones just down, pop it back out through the bottom. Pull through. Just take your time on this and pull through as a slip stitch and then chain three. So one, two, three. Here's the next one. So just, it's right here. So it's just right in the middle of the, of the cluster. So out and through. There you go, got it. And then chain three, one, two, three. This round doesn't take very long at all. So here's the next one. Just right in the middle. And then chain three, one, two, three. Next one. So if it were me and I was not on, not teaching this, I would keep this pretty much uh, with the back side facing me the whole time because I don't need to really look at the front side. Okay, and then chain three, one, two, three, and then come in to the next one. I'm leaving these tails in so that I can uh, secure them in better when I'm done and I'll show you how to do that as well. Normally I would get rid of that in a tutorial so just pull through as a slip stitch. And then one, two, and three. And this is where we started. 
So what I want to do is that I wanna just slip stitch it to the very beginning of where the other one is slip stitched right there. So what this is doing is it's creating a layer in effect on the bottom side so that I can see these because this is where the final layer is gonna go. So there's gonna be three layers to this complete shower uh, flower. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna teach you how now to hide these ends because I think it's important at this point and because I had you bury in that very first one so let's deal with that one first. Let's just pull up a loop. Um, that one because I had you buried in I can just uh, cut that one out safely and the other two I wanna use a darning needle and because you are gonna be using this in the shower and etc you are gonna probably have high use on your shower curtain. So what I want you to do is that I just want you to feed this in to a darning needle just like so and I want you to do it with the other one as well so I'll just show you one. So I want you to go into the same color and just glide it so that it's in fibers in the back side of your flower. So don't, if you see the needle through the front side you know that you're, you're way off basis. So keep it to the back side and go one and then go in a different path but back in the other direction Again just keeping it on this side of the flower for two and then back again in a different path in the same direction for three. So the flower can never stretch in three different directions therefore the tail will never fall out on you. So now you can safely cut that string right down to the base of the project and I want you to do the other string and then I'll meet you back here and we'll carry on to do the, the final round of your shower flower. So we're now ready for round number five. Round number five is gonna play within that chain three space and there's gonna be all of these stitches all within each chain uh, three or chain three space. Now you're gonna notice the chain one to get us up there. Um, we're not, that's not counted as anything in this particular pattern. So we're gonna chain one to start and then immediately in the first chain three we're going to provide so a single, half, double, treble, 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 double, half, and single. So this chart comes into real handy. So let's count how many there is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So it's an odd number so that makes sense. So remember it is single, half, double, treble, 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 double, half, and single. So right in the middle kind of mirrors each other and that will repeat itself. So once you get one done you just immediately jump to the next chain three space. Single, half, double, treble, 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 and double, half, single. So let's begin to do round number five. Okay so my loose ends are now in and I wanna turn it so that I'm looking at the good side. So this is what you'd be looking at. So the, the ring, uh, the chain three spaces are on the other side. So what we need to do to begin is that we need to chain up one and starting in the first chain three space we're gonna just follow exactly what was in the chart. So it was single, remember, and then we got half and then we had a double and then three trebles. So remember wrap that hook twice before you do a treble. So this is one and two and three and you're not done yet. You're gonna start getting smaller. So if you're running out of space just shift everything. Just move it because it's just around the center of the chain three. So then it comes back down to a double half and single. So there's one petal there. So let's just do the next one. So jump to the next chain three space and let's do, uh, repeat again. So uh, single, we got half, we had a double, we have three trebles. So let's do one and two and three. Again shift that if you need to and then we're gonna do a double half and I'm just gonna shift it and single. So what I want you to do is I want you to repeat that all the way around and just go to the next chain three and just again single, uh, half, double, treble, treble, treble and then double, half and single. Please do that all the way around and meet me back here and we'll finish off together. So I just finished my last single crochet and the next one here is the beginning. So I'm just going to slip stitch it to the beginning single crochet that I started with and I'm going to trim off my yarn and I'm gonna fasten it off with my uh, darning needle to, to do this. 
it says in the instructions to sew this onto your shower curtain ring. I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna show you another way because I know I wouldn't do it that if it was myself because I'm lazy. So I, I have a way that I can just put it onto it and then you can put your shower curtain on over top of it. So just going in the behind of this you want to just make your stitches kind of hide. Just glide them into the fibers in behind the work. Never on the front side because you'll see it and if you go in three different directions as I pointed out before you'll have a better way of keeping this in check and out of the view so it never falls out on you just like so. So I have a shower ring that I brought up uh, downstairs here. So let me just show you what I would do if it were me because if you look at the picture you'll see that it's just kind of dangling in position and I'll show you that next. So here's the photo and what we have to do is that we have to pay attention to the rings that we have. And so for example you whenever I have a shower curtain I never have this so that this bracket will face out like this. So if I'm looking at the shower from the outside you won't see this. You'll see this as the inside. So I will be showering inside here. So we want to make sure that the flower is sitting over here so that and then the shower curtain then goes in and then it locks into position. So if you look at the photo that's what you, exactly you're looking at here. So it says to sew on the flower but I would do it slightly different for me and here's what I would do. So if it were me what I would do I just kind of did a test is that I would fold this in half and you can see that there's strings that are just kind of sitting there. Okay do you see that there's strings there so I could use this one instead. So I can put my hook in behind there and I can fold this in half and I can pull that string up to be a little bit larger and then what I can do is that I can put the ring in and because I folded it I can actually get this in without having to interfere with the rest of the flower. So I'm just gonna fold it and I'm just gonna feed it through carefully. Now the thing with about shower curtain uh, I'm gonna go from the back side. Uh, the thing about shower curtain ideas like this is that these aren't designed as crochet hooks to slide in and out very easily. So then once it's in I can then just put it here and you're thinking to yourself okay well it's gonna dangle really weird but as soon as you get that shower curtain in there the shower curtain is gonna make it go back out like this and then you'll never see where it is on this side. So this is how I would do a shower curtain flower. And so it's a shower flower and you can just uh, shape to match and again use cotton yarn for this kind of uh, application because this yarn you don't need to worry about if it gets wet or not. So until next time I'm Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as Yarnspirations.com. Have a great day and enjoy your shower flower today. Bye bye.